The release of MCP servers are scaling rapidly across the board. However, the adoption in productive enterprise scenarios is not yet so fast. So in this video, I want to share a similar quick and easy way to create a powerful yet simple Copilot agent for SAP with Copilot Studio. The idea is to leverage the SAP OData connector with instructions so that any OData API are selected and called automatically by the large language model. This is something that you can test out today, leveraging all the components, including principal propagation, that you might already have available in your production environment. Let's take a look. OK, so let's get started with Copilot Studio. I am here in Copilot Studio. Actually, I'm also using a trial environment. And I want to start creating an, an agent. So I click on Create, New Agent. And I will give the, well, I'll, I'll actually jump to Configure. So I, I'm not using the AI functionalities to start with the configuration, but I'll just give it a name here. I'll call it Query SAP. I could give it a description. This agent enables you to look up information in the SAP system. We'll come back to the instructions later. I could add knowledge sources and other things. For now, I'll just click on Create. So now the agent is ready to go. I could ask here some, some basic questions. Obviously, what I want to do is I now want to connect to an SAP system. And this connection can be done via tools. So in the tools, I have actually lots of connectors available. I, I can um, look for features connectors. I, I can actually use different connectors that are available out of the box. I can use MCP, the model context protocol. For now, I'll stick with flows. And actually, again, there, there might be a lot of flows already in your specific system. I will create a new flow. So I click on new tools, agent flow. And basically, I end up with the new agent flow designer, very much similar to Power Automate. So what I can do now is I can actually search for OData connectors. And in the past, in previous videos, we used the read OData entity, for example, to read a specific entity from the OData service or the query to get a list. We could do updates, create, deletes. Today, we are going to use the create any type of OData connector or of OData request. And that's a very powerful thing because it allows me to create the relative path to an OData service directly here. So we will only use a get operation. Um, and now the interesting thing is in, instead of providing here the exact path to my OData service, what, what we will do is we will use um, a base path, basically. So in my specific case, the SAP system is actually behind a firewall. So we'll um, create a new connection. We'll um, call this connection PM4. OData connection, we will use it to connect via our on-premises data gateway. We'll provide a username. And now the only thing missing is the base URL. So for this, let me actually jump on the server where we have the gateway system installed. Here in this, um, in on, on this system, so I'm now on a um, remote machine, a virtual machine that is actually in the virtual network, the SAP system installed. So I can also really use the internal IP address. I, I can even use, like in this specific case, an HTTP URL. And now if I would call this specific OData service, so the slash SAP OPU OData, I can call the API sales order service API. And from this API, I can call the entity type sales order, which in this specific case returns um, the sales order with this specific number here. So this is something that I could call from Power Automate. What I will do instead is I will only use this specific path here, basically. So I will use the internal server IP and I'll use this SAP op, um, OPU OData slash SAP as the base URL. I mean, just let me call this here in the browser because I want to show that this URL does actually not work. Um, the server has not found any resource matching this data request endpoint because it's not the full URL. This is just part of the URL. But the cool thing is, as you'll see in a second, if we use this as a baseline, we can always append things like this so that out of this base URL, if I now add this, then I get the specific um, URL that can really retrieve information about sales orders. So with this, let's go back to our Power Automate and use this as the base URL. I click on Create. 
And now our create any type of um, or data request is almost done. There's one thing that we need. We want to bypass the metadata information call. So typically this request would actually um, do a dollar metadata query at first to this um, or data service to retrieve additional um, information, but we'll, we, we don't need that. Actually, this, this, this hurts us, so, so we'll stop this. Um, for the relative path, we're actually going to want an input from Copal Studio. So we'll call this OData query. And this input is something that we will add here to our Power Automate flow. Then the OData call will be executed. And as a result, we will get something that we want to hand back to our Copal Studio. So, so that's why here, this is our OData call. We'll just return the full body and let Copilot Studio decide what to do with this. So let's actually um, save this and we can publish it. So let's go back to the agent. And we can see, actually, let me do one thing. Let, let me go into the agent again. Let me open up the Power Automate flow or the um, flow again. And we will two, do two things. We'll first call this flow call SAP or data service. So we'll save this. And we'll do one more thing in the designer actually. Typically, when this flow is executed, um, it should continue with the respond to agent only if the previous call was successful. In our case, we also want to let Copal Studio know if the call was not successful so that Copal Studio can potentially do another query. So that's why we are saying here, this should run after this OData service, but in any case. So let me publish this again. And now we can actually also give it a try. So let's you do the test. We'll do a manual test. And obviously we need the OData query as an input. As I showed you before, if I only call this, it will not work. But if we, for example, use this as the input query, then it should work. So let's run the flow. We can see that the call was actually successful. We saw that obviously this, this is the input parameter and we get here, we can see, or actually let me show the raw out output here. We can see that a lot of information has been returned um, from our SAP system. So with this, let's go back to our agent. So in our SAP query agent, we have the tool now configured. So the, the agent can call our, um, our flow. It requires the OData data entry, and it also can return some information. Now we have to tell the agent that whenever there is an input, it should call the tool and ideally find out the relevant OData service that needs to be called. So the instructions basically tell Copal Studio that um, it has access to our root or data service. This is part of SAP ECC or Svahana instances. And all these SAP or data APIs can be accessed via our, let me actually change this, call SAP or data service tool. Under this root path, there are um, access business APIs like our SAP sales order, outbound delivery, API bill billing document services, and so on. It's important, and we'll see that in a second, that this is just an example. We could also upload uh, metadata information to the knowledge source to make this even better. In our case, we'll, we'll skip this because I want to show you how powerful this simple integration already is today. So then what we are telling the, the agent is when answering a question, always follow these steps. So first, identify which OData API can be leveraged to use this information. Then you have to convert the question to an OData query. After that, call the tool, the um, call SAP OData service tool, providing the OData query that we got there. And then replies from OData queries might be huge. So if possible, limit the results to a dollar top 10 and let the user know that you limited the results. 
when you get an error message back, so sometimes a call to an OData service obviously provides error messages, then read the error message. That's why it was important to also return error information, update the query, and start to call the tool again using step two. If you get some good results back from the service, format the result in a very visual appealing way. Then we provide just, provide just additional information like what are sample um, um, or data calls to call a uh, sales order, what, how you would get potentially more information, also talk about expand um, um, functionalities, and then also talk about dollar top and dollar filter operations. So let's just save this and start with a very simple question. Let's just ask, show me sales orders. So obviously a lot of this information is already documented explicitly as examples in the instructions. But what you can see already, it created a very interesting query here. So I found out the right API sales order API. It knew the entity type and it limited, like what we described, this whole thing to a dollar top 10. Now, since this is the very first time we call the service, we need to allow access to it and returns a list of sales orders from the SAP system. Now, you could argue that's not too special because obviously we, we use this in the description and everything, but let's do a drill down. Let's say, show me, show me sales, um, details about sales order six. And you can see it used the API, it provided or it asks specifically for six, uh, sales order six, and it used even expand to two partner, two items, two billing. And I get a beautiful overview of the information from the SAP system. Again, you could argue, well, this is not some really fantastic because this or something similar was already part of the instructions. So let's do something that we did not put in the instruction. Show me the latest five business partners. The cool thing now is here, even though we hadn't put this in the instruction, it detects the right API, API business partners. It uses the right entity set and it provides me even information on the top five ordered by creation day. And it returns the list here of the business partners. Now, obviously all of this can also be deployed to Teams, to Microsoft 365 Copilot. With this, you can enable your end users to explore SAP data directly from Teams and Copilot. Thank you very much for watching.